Hey, so just I haven't been on in a while. I'm coming back from a beach, beach trip. As you can see, I'm still wearing a bathing suit and my beach dress. So this is gonna be a cool, quick video because um, the goal is just to just give a, a update on something that was really penetrating with me mentally, like an understanding of um, how different we can be. And, and it's not always a problem. It should not be. It should not be a problem. Um, but, and, and, and even still, you know, we got to be able to, sorry, I'm not gonna want to put this up so I can be a little bit closer to my face. But even still, yeah, we have to be able to not trip each other up when it comes to like our own belief systems. There's so many different belief systems like faiths and stuff of that nature, right? And um, this is all about matching faith. And it's like, we're not always having to match faith. It's really good when you can, when you all have the same similar ideas and say, hey, I believe in this, I believe in that. We come together and we praise God for the good that is to come. It's not to be dimin diminishing of anyone, right? Our goal is to, to ignite a passion that we're connecting with one another and we're appreciating one another and we're sharing ways to connect in a positive way, not trip people up. A lot of people don't go to church because of solid judgment. Solidary judgments can creep can keep people from really trusting and hearing something good that can really better their lives, right? Because they're afraid of judgment right off the top to even get inside there. They're really concerned about judgment and that can trip people up. And that's what this is all about. We can't always match everybody's say. There are so many ways to get things accomplished. And your way is not necessarily better than somebody else's way. It is just their way sometimes. But that doesn't mean they're allowed to be malicious or harmful or or, or destroy you or vengeful or, or um, gossipy or any of that. Because people are really set on judging people. And we are suspended in God's space. We are here on God's time. And God did not permit our time just to be judging others. Because they don't know the walk and they don't know how they could survive if they had to go through the exact same things that somebody else has had to endure. They don't know how they will tra travel and they don't know, and that's travel or travel because travel is to really have a, a hard pers persecutionary experience that you have to travel through with valency and, and it's an ailing at times that can ail you. But you have to be vigorous to get through it. So, um, the rigor and grit, right? And so, this is all about how we can't match people's faith. So, let's give an example. Marriage, right? In particular, marriage is one of those things that really hits people in a very sensitive area, right? There's so many rules about what you can do before and after marriage. There's so many stories in the Bible that, that people have utilized as ways to say, hey, sex does not always go within marriage. And, and we can mention this. Like, well, David saw Bathsheba. He was a, she was somebody else's wife. She was taking a bath. And she was minding her business. And the king said, hey, I, I want to see her closer, up close. To the point where he wanted her after he had her so bad he kept wanting her right he kept wanting her so this is not a one night stand let's just put it like that not a what night stand so he wants her so much that he realizes her husband is going to come back uriah was her husband uriah was at the front line leading his army and David had a lot of other children. So his children were in this battle and in this war. And Uriah was a frontline man. He was like a leader. Now, he was not a frontline in battle. He was a leader. He was like an officer saying, this is what you got to do. This is how you're going to operate till we win these wars, right? And so with that being the case, a very logistic uh, kind of guy out here working for the kingdom. 
And David sees his wife and he lusts after her, okay? He lusts after her. He, he craves her so deeply that he cannot resist her, especially after he has her intimately, right? And so he marries her, but before he marries her and, and becomes the father of Solomon because their first baby did not survive, they had a miscarriage, but, and it hurt her, either maybe the baby was even born and then it was like, it was like not born healthy and it passed away quickly, something like that. But the point is, is that it was because of his sin of taking another man's wife, lusting after her and stealing her from another man. Guys are very particular about this, okay? They do not like when anybody gets next to their woman, right? And so, but the thing is, is that in this current state of millennialism, in this millennial, in this 21st century, we are now having a battle of guys loving women, right? And being so so enamored with them. I mean, to the point where the porn industry is ridiculous. People can catch sex a lot. And this like the establishment of rules and dynamics has allowed people to feel like they can be snooty because they think, well, I'm married. But they were doing everything prior to getting married with that person before they married them everything even having kids right and to the point of even having kids right because that's what happened then he got her pregnant and was like oh i'm gonna now what i'm gonna do i can't send her back because he's been at war so he's not gonna think this is his baby and so he had to marry her but at least he had the dignity as a king to marry her and make it right and not only did he marry her and make it right he passed his lineage to her her son Solomon and he became the wisest man so he took another man's wife even and had her had a baby had to go through the punishment of loving her so much that they lost that baby and that hurt but also the punishment of killing another man to have his wife right and do we do that in this world do we hurt another man's child are we mean to other people's children by being so judgmental against them that we set in these sometimes unrealistic goals. And I'll go to this example, prayer closets and things of that nature. And that's just really came to me potently. And the potentness of this is that lesson. A prayer closet is so a beautiful gift. It's a very nice thing, but not everybody has time to pray in a closet. Not everybody even has closets. Some people live in flats. Some people live in dorm rooms where they only have a dresser and a bed maybe, right? Some people travel across the globes and stay in hostels where they have to just sleep on a bump bed, okay? Some people travel in trains and cars and they do work that is nighttime to the daytime. And they don't have the space for a prayer closet, right? And so people go to church feeling like they're going to have to fulfill all these high level requirements in Christendom, right? So in order to feel like they've achieved some type of acceptance. And this is what this has to do. Matching my faith to your faith should not mean that I can't not accept you if your faith says you got to do this. My faith has got to do that. The Bible says that we all have different levels of faith, right? We do. We have different levels of faith, right? The Bible says we have to go from strength to strength. We have to grow from strength to strength, faith to faith. So my journey might not be your journey. Just like we have ages, numerous ages of people on this earth at all given times. People are at all different times of growth in their faith. The Bible says when you become a man, what do we do? We put away what? Those childish things. He says, we put away them childish things when we become a man. So sometimes it's not about faith and it's not about tradition. And it's not about how somebody says you have to do this in order to be accepted, in order to sit on the front row, in order to be able to sit behind the pastor. Okay. Because people people really get into like this Christian, 
hierarchy of like, I'm better than you because I, I, my name is minister this, or my name is pastor Creola this, whatever, whatever. Okay. That's not what makes you saved. What makes you saved is putting away childish things. What makes you holy is putting away childish things. It's a whole scripture. Okay. Okay. It's a whole scripture in the Bible. And so, um, the scripture is there to teach you in first Corinthians 13 and 11, first Corinthians 13 and 11. And it states when I was a child, I talked like a child because children have a way they talk. They children have a way that they talk. They're even learning how to talk. So some of the things that people do sometimes you can see it's like, oh, you're being childish. You're, you're, are you gossiping? Like, hold on. That's not even direct English. You're not even talking to the person directly. Like, are you a child? Because babies, they be babbling, crying in the crib to themselves. They don't know what, they don't know everything, but they're learning and they're learning from what they see. They're learning from what they observe, right? So the Bible says, when I was a child, in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. Yes. You did okay. Mommy gonna mommy gonna get it. Okay. I reasoned like a child, and when I became a man, I would I put away the childish things behind me. Mommy gonna change that diaper because you can go soon. You'll learn to go potty, right? Yes, yes. I'm change that diaper. You ready? Okay, mommy will do it. And so you got to put away these childish things, right? You have to grow up to the point of being able to do things independently. Independently, meaning I don't have to go to a Facebook post. I don't have to open up an IG or read somebody's wonderful thing that says something. But you should, because the Bible says, study to show yourself approved of workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, right? And so with that being the case, 1 Corinthians 13, 11 is going to pause right here because I have <laughs> things to do. But with that being the case, reasoning and becoming a man have a lot to do with how you get to your true faith self, your best self, where you're not having to judge somebody else's walk and then tell somebody else they're doing something wrong. No, help them with your wisdom. Don't, don't trip them up with your judgment, right? And then we're going to pause that and then I'll come back.